Welcome to the AECI Plant Health Podcast, where we have conversations that help you unlock nature's potential. Hey, I'm Zandi, and welcome to Farmers Inside Track, powered by AECI Plant Health. I'm your host, Dornumdu. It's time for another update from AECI Plant Health. And today we're excited to have Patrick Levieux, Technical Advisory Specialist for the southern part of South Africa, joining us here on Farmers Inside Track. As an expert in the field of biological products, Patrick will be sharing his insights with Food from Zanzi journalist Octavius Pandil on the role of biological products in current agriculture. They'll be discussing how these products can help farmers create more sustainable farming practices by reducing their reliance on chemical pesticides and how they can be integrated into an integrated pest management strategy. If you're interested in learning more about the future of farming in South Africa and how we can make it more sustainable, you won't want to miss this conversation. Over to you, Octavia. Thanks, Dawn. Patek, love you. Thanks for joining us here on Farmers Inside Track. How do biological products differ from chemical pesticides in terms of their impact on the environment? Octavia, this is an interesting question because some people may have the initial feeling that because it's biological, that it's immediately safe, you know, and it's much better for the environment or for people. But both chemical and biological products, they really need to follow strict ecotox studies and registration processes. So just like our normal chemical fungicides or insecticides or whatever, they need to be registered products that are on the market that prove to us as consumers or suppliers that, you know, the work has been done to say that this product really does what it's meant to do and that it's safe for both the consumer, for the user, and for the environment. So from that perspective, we must remember that even though it's biological, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's safe. But if it is registered, then we can be very confident that it is a product that, let's say, is probably safer for the environment in the short term and that, you know, we just have to treat these things carefully. And that's all I'm putting out to the listeners is that you know one thing is not necessarily better than the other when it comes to its profile from a toxicology perspective. But in general, what we have out there and what is currently registered where the work has been done, you can safely say that it's safe for the consumer and it is safe for the environment. And what are some of the most common misconceptions that farmers have about biological products and how can they be addressed? From my experience getting onto the field and chatting with people out there is that often the misconception with biologicals is that it's actually organic. So there's a misunderstanding in the terminology. Biological products can range from a a huge range of different products, be them viruses, bacteria, fungi, plant extracts, a range of different things. Even sulfur or copper may be considered to be a biological product. Some people think, sure, because it's a living organism, maybe like a a beneficial insect or a fungus that immediately it's organic, but organic is a registration process. So unless a product that's biological is registered organic, it doesn't necessarily mean it's organic. So that's one misconception that I get a lot. And another one is that because of the history of biologicals and bio-rational products around the world, that there was a lot of, let's say, hearsay and anecdotal information on the efficacy of these products is that it's been tainted a little bit, you know, that it's now snake oils or langhof or whatever. But, you know, the reputation of the products need to be upheld because there's been a lot more work that's been done to prove that they are effective when used correctly. So a misconception is that, you know, they don't work. But when really what we need to be focusing on is where it is that they do work and managing the expectation because they won't necessarily have as a radical performance as a concentrated chemical product. So for me, those are the two big misconceptions I hear the most in the field. So now that we've addressed some of the misconceptions, can biological products be used to control all types of pests and diseases, or are they more effective against some than others? Just like chemical products, where you'll have certain groups of chemistries that will be, you know, you'll have your fungicides and you have your insecticides, and then within fungicides, We get different groups that will work better on different diseases, for example. And that's the same thing with biologicals. They won't just solve all the problems. You'll have to choose specific organisms to target specific pests and diseases. And then you'll get some organisms, like there's quite a few bacterial species out there that are registered that are quite generalist. So they will kill 
are the fungus, for example. So there'll be a biological fungicide that doesn't just target one species, but you'll find that it actually competes or antagonizes with a range of different species. And that's why it's so important to use products that have been registered, because then it'll show the farmer, you know, this is exactly what we've done our studies on, and we're confident that it is effective against these pests or diseases. That's the best way to go about it, I would say. Because otherwise, then you really would be wasting your money buying something thinking, oh, you know, I've been told it can solve all these problems when really, you know, it can't. So the label is the best thing to guide the consumer currently. And how do you recommend that farmers integrate biological products into their pest management strategies? My biggest recommendation is to go slowly. <laughs> Because if you just go ahead first, that can cause some issues. There have been cases in the past where people have convinced themselves, they've done all their reading, they've been speaking to people and they decide, I'm going to change my farm. I'm going to go from a full chemical program and synthetic fertilizers, for example, to I'm going to go fully biological. And what ends up happening is that they, they face a lot of problems after that. And the reason being is the plants aren't ready for it. Their land isn't ready for it. They themselves as the farmer aren't ready for it. It takes a bit of time to shift across to what we would call more biological practices or regenerative practices. Some of the aspects that change from, let's say, the farmer's side is that there's a lot more responsibility on them. They need to get into the field more. It relies on a lot more monitoring, probably a little bit more training uh, to understand biology now, more so than this chemical, this product is used for this weed and this one is used for this disease and you spray it. Now you really need to become quite a biologist and get in there and be able to identify where your problems are, your hotspots in your field. It's a more hands-on approach. So my recommendation is to go in slowly, start substituting certain products for other products, and then learn from there because what works on your farm may not necessarily work on someone else's farm and vice versa. So instead of just going right in and then finding yourself in a lot of trouble, is to slowly work with products. And when you find your comfort zone and you find what works for you, then extend that knowledge and incorporate new practices from there. You know, you wouldn't just at home suddenly change everything around the house. All of a sudden, you would slowly integrate things. That way you can build, you know, and then you need to keep it integrated. You don't necessarily just want to go all the way to one extreme to the next, in my opinion. I think an integrated pest management approach is probably the best and most sustainable. And finally, what are some of the key challenges that farmers face when transitioning to more sustainable farming practices? And how can biological products help overcome those challenges? There's a few challenges that are out there. I think we can separate transition probably into two parts because you're talking about sustainable farming practices, the transition to, and then and then biologicals and that. How can that help them face the challenges there? I think if we just address the sustainable farming practices, is uh, I think I may have touched on a few of the topics there when transitioning, is that you want to go slowly because misinformation is a big issue where people say, ah, oh, you get caught up in all these great ideas about how wonderful it'll be to remove all the chemicals, for example, yet they have a very important role, some of them, you know, and some of them are really brilliant products. And if you are misinformed, I think you're going to burn your fingers. So people need to really sit and educate themselves on what it means to them, what sustainable farming practices are. I mean, there's, there's definitely books out there that will list a few things that are more sustainable, for example, like mulching or using cover crops or improving the carbon content in their soils, using softer products like biological products. So there's definitely some aspects there, but there's a lot of other cultural practices that can come in. There's a lot of belief processes. So informing yourself is one of the most important parts of transitioning to more sustainable farming practices. And biologicals would only just be a tool in that transition. So one of many tools. So as I mentioned, they don't even have to look at products. They can maybe change their philosophy on how they see the land, how they manage their water, and how they manage their biodiversity. So maybe bringing in more of the natural vegetation around their their farm or creating corridors through their farm. That helps insects and other organisms move through their farm, which can be very beneficial. And that's another tool. So biologicals is just those tools in the toolbox to help transition for something that's probably more according to the farmer's definition sustainable it's a personal experience you know sort of it's something that a farmer must really sit down by themselves and and their colleagues and their close ones and take the information from everyone and then decide don't just pick one person and run with it because that information may be loaded with a personal agenda and i'm worried about that happening for some people 
So I think biologicals have a big role in all of it, but the whole picture needs to be seen. And as, as I mentioned earlier, the, the idea of an agro-ecosystem needs to be approached where the farmer moves away from looking at their farm as purely just a factory that's, you know, you've got inputs and outputs, but they need to treat it as a living organism. And biologicals definitely can facilitate in that process. Thanks, Octavia. And it was great having you join us, Patrick Levieux, Technical Advisory Specialist for AECI Plant Health in the southern part of South Africa. You can, of course, read more on this topic by visiting www.foodformzanzi.co.za. And that's a wrap from me, Don Umdu, Octavius Pandil, our technical producer, Megan van der Vent, and the rest of the hashtag Team Food from Zanzi. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. Another production from Solid Gold Podcasts.